I know very little about Steven Universe. I've never seen the show, but we've taken a look at the timeline for Gravity Falls Adventure Time. So now it's time to take a look at the recap for Steven Universe from Fort the Ferret, who I am mutuals with on Twitter. And I asked, can I react to your video? They said, absolutely, go for it. So I'm excited. I know that everybody loves Steven Universe. I'm sure it's an absolutely fantastic show, but there is too much content coming out. So we need to absorb this information in a more condensed way. So today we're gonna look at everything you need to know from Steven Universe. Steven Universe is a Cartoon Network show about a kid named Steven who's a member of this group called the Crystal Gems. Okay, that's Steven. Amethyst and Pearl. Garnet's chill, Amethyst's kind of punky, and Pearl looks like a bird. The gems are a race of like alien Doesn't beings look like that a bird. are basically just rocks with brains that project. Wait, why is Steven called Steven? He should be named after some manner of gem. I mean, he wears red, maybe ruby. Maybe that could be his nickname. Physical forms. So like their bodies aren't real, but they are. Like they can still okay. get hurt and stuff. I don't know, sure. but basically Steven's a gem too. Mostly. He's the child of Rose Quartz, the former leader of the Crystal Gems, and Greg Universe, just some dude. So he's part gem. His name is Greg Universe? That's like having a name like Max Power. It's like such a metal name. But why is he called Greg? You can't have a second name be Universe and your first name be Greg. What are your parents doing? And part human. Rose actually had to give up her physical form in order for Steven to exist, so she's pretty much dead, and what? Steven's got her gem. The gems all live in a town called Beach City and go on adventures fighting monsters and stuff. But okay, Steven's cool. gotta stay home because he doesn't know how to work his gem powers yet. Most early episodes center around explaining different aspects of the gem race and showing Steven learn how to use his gem powers. Steven eventually gets to go on missions, he learns he can shapeshift, he gets a magic pink lion, he meets a girl named Connie, he finds out he has healing powers, he learns that gems can fuse together, he finds this Magic. Oh, that's cool. I love fusion in any kind of show. I always love fusion and like Yu-Gi-Oh. I love fusion in general. It just seems like a really cool aspect. In Dragon Ball, you can fuse together to become more powerful. Just a really sick concept. That turns out to be another gem called Lapis Lazuli. That one's important. And he almost freaking dies of old age in a shockingly real scene that disturbed the heck out of me the first time I saw it. Oh, oh and he can summon okay. his mom's shield. That's important, I guess. But that's, even with uh, all that. Uh, having a shield power is like one of the worst superpowers that you can have. Like, okay, cool, you're, you're a shield guy. It's like being Zamazenta. Everyone likes Zarsian, no one likes Zamazenta. No one cares about shield powers. Oh, but Captain America. Yeah, Captain America does like what? He punches guys. He's kind of strong. You only like him because you're American, probably. I imagine there's some Canadians that like him too. At the real main plot of this season involves the gems warping around the earth and fighting these monsters that are actually other gems that have been corrupted. So okay. now they're scary monsters. But even scary monsters have feelings. But how did all these gems get on Earth? Oh no, is this the show version of Undertale where you can kill the monsters or you can befriend the monsters and spare them and then go on dates with them afterwards only for them to reveal that they're not actually that into you to begin with? In the first place. Well, remember how I said gems are aliens? They come from this planet called Homeworld, which is run by four ultra powerful gems called diamonds, yellow, blue, white, and pink. They're mostly just taller than everyone else. And they invaded Earth, tried to destroy all of its organic life and turn the whole planet into a place to grow more gems. But the crystal gems rebelled okay. against Homeworld, a freaking war broke out, and a Based. ton of gems were shattered. Or, you know, killed. killed. But the crystal gems somehow managed to save the Earth from being colonized, so things were mostly chill. But then, nice. thousands of years later, some suspicious stuff starts going down. Steven discovers that a new gem with these robot limbs named Paradot Course. is chatting up on the planet and repairing various warp stations that lead back to Homeworld. This uh -oh. is a pretty obvious problem for a bunch- Then if they come back, obviously colonization happens again. Trust me, I know what all of the colonization is about. As a British person, I've been on the bad end of that. Or not the bad end, I guess the people doing the bad part the British people were the bad guys. We don't need more British people, believe me. Bunch of war criminals hiding out on Earth. So the gems destroy the warp pad, obviously. But that only causes more problems as Peridot brings a whole freaking ship to Earth with Lapis, that mirror gem, and this big freaking scary gem, Jasper. Uh 
So we're already in a battle to keep humanity alive and protect the Earth. Gonna be honest, I thought Steven Universe was a little bit more low-key to begin with, but we're not even five minutes in and we're potentially facing worldwide destruction. Or at least colonization, which, you know, it's pretty close. Uh, Jasper thinks Steven is Rose Court, so she kidnaps everyone and starts flying them back to Homeworld. And this is where we find out the first big twist of the series, Ruby and Sapphire. On Jasper's ship, there's Ruby and Sapphire. Two more imprisoned gems, Ruby and Sapphire, who are actually. Oh. Okay. Garnet. Yes, this entire time, you can Garnet's split. It's been a fusion. Ruby and Sapphire oh. reunite to form Garnet. Jasper gets all Ugh, fusions for poo poo butt gems who are weak. But then Garnet's just like, I'm gonna rap now. She kicks Jasper's butt, the ship crash lands back on Earth, and it all culminates with one last face off on the beach. In a moment of desperation, Jasper fuses with Lapis, forming a new gem. Oh, very hypocritical of you to say that fusion is for ass cheeks and then proceed to do fusion. Very hypocritical. Indeed. What if you fuse all of the crystals together? Will that be creates the Omni Crystal? Malachite. But Lapis manages to control the fusion enough to retreat into the ocean and stop anyone from being hurt. And Wait, yeah, he's gonna drown him? So he's dead, nice. right? How'd this season start again? Uh, I just turned all my fingers into cats. So yeah. Let's go. Wait, you can do that with gem powers? Okay, never mind. I take it back. Gem powers are absolutely fantastic. Gem powers are the best. We should all have gem powers. Every human being should then get it at the end of Steven Universe by the sacrifice of the great diamonds to give all the humans gem powers. I think that's how this should end. Where did the sound go? The picture for now, season two is mostly about finding Peridot and dealing with these creepy new gem monsters made out of fused pieces of shattered gems. They're oh like no. Freak. Oh, that's just asking for trouble there. If you take the broken versions and you put them together all wrong, it's like those fossils from Sword and Shield, those weird incorrect fossils, except I assume they're gonna be a lot more the violent. mutant zombie Frankenstein monsters. Oh nice. Yeah, it's kind of disturbing, actually. Man, it just reminds me of like Warhammer 40k creatures, but for kids. Oh, this is just Warhammer for kids! Oh, Pearl is teaching Steven's friend Connie to sword fight. Yay! Which comes in handy when the mutated gem experiments start showing up in town. Oh no! That could cause such an imminent threat to all the innocent people. I'm sure they're going to warn all the citizens and- <gasps> Peridot! Oh my gosh, get her! Kill it! Yeah, next episode, Perry's back. And the whole gem mutants reaching beach city thing is just kind of abandoned. I'm sure they'll be fine. The what? gems finally managed to <laughs> capture- Wait, they just leave? They're getting invaded by these little gem mutants and everyone's like, all right, well, I mean, Paradox over there, so we should- I'm gonna have to go now. See you later, we got a police force, right? Like we got Officer Jenny. No. And she tells them about this thing called the Cluster, which is an enormous bioweapon built out of a ton of those gem fusion experiments that have been buried in the Earth's crust. It's been building and building over thousands of years. And once it takes form, it would totally destroy the planet. Wow. That's a pretty huge threat. They well, that's not good. You don't want to destroy the planet. Even those big diamonds want to colonize the planet. So here's what we do. We get the big diamonds. We get the Steven gang, put them together to stop the world from being destroyed. Then they can go back to fighting each other afterwards. probably warn everyone and maybe bring in the military. Nope. Or they decide to build a drill to dig to the center of the earth completely nice. on their own at using spare parts they found in a barn. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> Great, sure. Makes total sense, whatever. On these and kids the of the season is just the five of them working on this drill as Peridot learns more about the earth and eventually becomes a crystal gem herself. Eh? Redemption, woo! Honestly though, when I first started watching Steven Universe, the whole Peridot becomes a crystal gem arc was basically what made me officially fall in love with the series. It's just really? too wholesome. But anyway, now- Oh, that's cute. It's like Vegeta becoming a good guy, except with way less anger, I assume. Because no one is as angry as Vegeta is. On to season three, and everything is going wrong. Malachite's nice. Malachite's back, and the cluster is forming, both at the same time. So the gang has to split up, with Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl fighting Malachite, leaving Steven and Peridot to deal with the cluster completely on their own. Malachite gets her butt whipped, and the gems save Lapis from Jasper, which is good. But surprise, surprise, the drill sucks at destroying the cluster, and Steven and Peridot... 
What? What do you mean? We just built this in a barn. What do you mean it sucks? Do you kidding me? This is why we have regulations? I built this in my backyard. The next thing you're gonna tell me is the submarine that I built isn't gonna be able to reach the Titanic. I die, which is bad. But then Steven somehow manages to communicate with the cluster. The cluster just wants to form, but Steven's like, but you have each other. And that works. Apparently, Steven, friendship power the really. All the gem shards in the cluster manages to place the whole thing in a stasis bubble. So like, it's dormant again, but it's still there. Eh, good enough for me. And ah, uh, so it's like having the bomb in Megaton just sitting there, and then they build a entire culture around it, and they just sit there with an atomic bomb in the middle of the town. Megaton, Fallout 3, what are you doing? We should move somewhere else away from the atomic bomb. Maybe we should build a spaceship and go to a different planet. We probably have the technology with all the aliens that keep invading. We can just steal that technology instead. I mean, why not? And after that action-packed premiere, the rest of the season just kind of kicks around for a while. The main thing going on is the hunt for Jasper. Steven's got speech but level 100. Steven's passed a really hard speech check against the cluster. He had like a 5% chance. He just said, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it, boys. Let's see what happens. He passed it. He loses his mind. Time, Steven finds another new gem, a former member of the Crystal Gems named Bismuth. She gets along with everyone really well, but has to be poofed again because she wanted to create this intense weapon to shatter gems. Basically, she wanted to go on a killing spree, so... No, let her. Bye-bye, Bismuth. No, listen, everyone can have a little bit of fun. You wanna go to theme parks? Have a little bit of fun. You wanna go on holiday? You have a little bit of fun. You wanna lie on the beach? You have a little bit of fun. Wanna shout some gems? It's a little bit of fun. <laughs> right after that, <gasps> Jasper's back! Get her! Kill it! Steven, Peridot, and Amethyst find Jasper building an army of corrupted gems. Amethyst tries to fight her off on her own, but gets her butt kicked. So Steven tries to help her out and they accidentally end up fusing together. This is the nice. first time Steven fuses with any of the main crystal gems. Okay, so my question is, how does consciousness work with fusions in this? Because in Dragon Ball, two consciousness fusion to one and they have elements of both. It potentially a more powerful one could just overpower a weaker consciousness and then they have complete control. Like how does, how does it work in this? And it is so hype, but uh, things get mega Three arms? again right after as Jasper attempts to fuse with a corrupted gem, gets corrupted herself, and lets on about something horrible Rose did to Pink Diamond before going full monster and getting poofed by Peridot. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was a lot. Wait, Peridot's strong enough to just one-shot this? What the hell? And what was Jasper saying about Pink Diamond? Well, one thing I haven't mentioned is that a Pink Diamond is dead, shattered by Rose Quartz. Yeah, the mother. So Steven's mom is a shatterer, yep. and that's a pretty intense thing for a kid to go through. So a murderer. naturally, in a show like Steven Universe that's all about being connected with your feelings, it's time for a wacky Roadrunner parody with Peridot. Yeah, let's we're go. entering season four now, and Steven Universe kinda has this habit of doing a lot of filler episodes right after things get interesting. So we just kinda do that for a while until eventually we meet because you need to be able to cool down a little bit from the really intense stuff. Oh, someone's mom's a murderer? All right, let's go to the park. Let's have a nice little fun time. There needs to be ups and downs, right? Two new mysterious gems, Topaz and Aquamarine, who were sent by the diamonds to kidnap Steven's friends. Steven manages to save them by giving himself over, claiming to be Rose Quartz, and the spaceship sets off for homeworld. How do you claim to be your own mother? Can they just not tell? So now it's just Topaz, Aquamarine, Steven, and Lars. Ugh, right? Haven't mentioned Ugh. him yet. So this is right. Lars. He's a human yeah. who works at a donut shop in Beach City, and for the majority of the show, he is the worst. He's always a jerk, he learns no lessons, and he is frustrating beyond belief to watch. He's the Sounds worst, like me. and I hate him. Except, er, well, we'll get to that. Steven and Lars are taken to Homeworld, and Steven is put on trial for the shattering of Pink Diamond. But Steven's lawyer realizes that there are a ton of holes in the story. Like, how could anyone get that close to a diamond and no one notice or try to stop it? It doesn't mm. make sense. Yellow mm. gets totally fed up with all of this and starts raging, ah. giving Steven and Lars time to escape. They cry about game theory. They did it. The diamonds did it. 
and they're trying to cover up by blaming Rose Quartz, but they clearly didn't try very hard because there's a ton of holes in the story. <laughs> in a dark corner of Homeworld and meet a group of unusual gems called the Off Colors. They're all different in some way, so Ew, they weird. hide or else they'll be destroyed by the scanner droids that explode any gem they find. But Lars doesn't have a gem, so he's basically invisible. And once an attack starts, Lars decides to finally stand up and fight, saving everyone. But then Lars dies. What? And he doesn't. Steven oh. starts crying and his tears bring Lars back to life. Okay, so we're replaying the first Pokemon movie. Is that what we're doing? Where Pikachu cries over Ash's decaying rock corpse. And it's like, oh, the power of sadness brought him back to and life. Lars said he has healing powers. And now Lars is all pink and his hair works like a portal that connects to what? Steven's lion, who also what? has portal hair. Lion? Don't question it, we're almost huh? done. So Lars is back after being dead for five seconds and now he's a good person. It took four seasons and the end of his life to do it, but Lars doesn't suck anymore. <laughs> he had to die to become a good person. <laughs> He and the Off Colors escape Homeworld and start traveling space Star Trek style while Steven escapes back to Beach City through Lars's hair. It's more normal than it sounds, I promise. Okay, Fast yeah, sure. And Steven has a strange dream about Pink Diamond where he sees Pearl sneak up behind her and draw a sword. And no, uh, it, nah, it's a bait and switch. There's no way. That's too easy. Oh, you have a dream about what happens? Somehow, why would you have? You have why, why would that mean anything? I have dreams about lots of things. My main nightmare is that I wake up in a school and there's Chucky dolls, evil dolls that are coming to stab me. So I need to get out of the situation, but I can't move fast enough. So I throw myself out a window and then I wake up. Does that mean it's gonna happen in real life? Yes, but I'm still terrified of it. His dreams are usually astral projections, so oh, that's concerning. <laughs> he can. Okay, I don't think my dreams are astral projections like Steven's are, so I don't think that I can really make any kind of argument anymore. He Pearl about what he saw, and we get the biggest reveal of the entire series. Did you Rose do it? Court, Steven's mom, is Pearl? was Pink Diamond. Okay. Son of a bitch. What? 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 So, so Pearl killed his mom? was actually the one who wanted to rebel against the diamonds, save Earth, and start a new life. So she created okay. a new identity and killed off Pink by having Pearl take Rose's form and pretend to shatter her. And because oh. Pink was Rose, and Rose's gem is now in Steven, that means Steven- Steven is a diamond! then, right? Is Pink Diamond. Again. What? And with that news finally out in the open, everything starts happening at once. The diamonds come to Earth to attack, the cluster comes back out of nowhere and forms a giant arm like the diamond ships, but- Oh, the master hand appears, cool. Is apparently fighting on the crystal gem side. That's pretty weird. Oh, and Bismuth is back. You know, no, they're friends. The like I said, if you pass a speech level 100 check with a 5% chance, then you just get that kind of hacks. Like, not only is he gonna shut down and not destroy the earth, but he's gonna come back and be on your hand. <laughs> be on your side. That wanted to shatter a bunch of people and even tried to shatter Steven. Yeah, everyone's just cool with her now. Ah, uh, being cool with attempted murderers is tight. Anyway, they all fight the diamonds until Steven, through some weird psychic stuff that's never really explained, is finally able to convince Blue and Yellow Diamond that he really is pink and stop the fighting. So Blue and Yellow aren't threats anymore. Not really. But we're not done yet. Steven wants the diamonds another one, to isn't help that? him cure all the corrupted gems. But but even with the three of them, they just can't do it. They need someone else, White Diamond. And up to this point in the show, we've barely even heard about White, let alone seen her. So the whole crew are now off to Homeworld one last time to talk to White Diamond. To make a long story short, it went didn't go well. A lot yeah. happens during this arc, but the basics are White attacks everyone and things get <laughs> really cool. Every crystal gem is fighting off White's giant robot and we even get to see a- Hold on, if you have three diamonds versus one diamond, listen, I'm no mathematical major. I'm no science of quantum mechanics, but I do think that three bigger than Ton one- of new fusions. But White overpowers them and zaps the what? diamonds and the gems, putting them under her control. Nah, that's overpowered. This is when you don't know how to write a final boss, so you're just like, oh, we'll just give them super omega powers, we'll let them suck the power from the planet or something like that, or zap the power from everyone else. Come on, you got three diamonds on your side, what are you doing losing? Do you suck? Oh, maybe White Diamond is just like a master level player, like a really good fighter. 
It was like kung fu and stuff. Poo poo. She grabs Steven and forcibly rips out his gem because she thinks it'll release Pink's original form. Instead, oh. it releases this super powerful, otherworldly Pink version of Steven, which I guess is supposed to be like Super Saiyan? Steven's gem half or something. Meanwhile, Steven's gemless human half is left weak and powerless. And White's all like, where's Pink? But Gem Steven's just like, she's. And then the two Stevens walk up to each other, laugh, cry, hug each other a lot, and then they fuse together, it's animated really well, and Steven is back! What even just happened? And in that moment, well on Homeworld they say, that White Diamond's heart grew three sizes that day. No way, she's just gonna be like, oh, that was really cute, I'm good now. Seriously, white starts glowing pink, meaning she's now off color. She's not perfect like she wanted to be, but that's okay. And Steven's like, that's kind of what we've been saying for five seasons. And that's just cute. like before, white's no longer a threat. The gems and the diamonds all go back to earth and cure all of the Wow, she really just did get like a little, a little embarrassed. She got a little red, a little flustered, a little rosy in the cheeks, and then she said, oh, well, I'm not perfect, just like you're not perfect. And the moral of the story is we may all have flaws, but at the end of the day, we need to support each other. And that's what, that's where it ended. Corrupted gems. <laughs> Even Jasper. Oh, and Lars and the off colors make it back to Earth too. All the gems are safe, the diamonds learn the error of their ways, and everyone lived happily ever after. Cool, uh, we're only halfway through this video, so I imagine that we don't live happily ever after in actuality. And that is the complete story of Steven yep. Universe from beginning to end. This Kay. is legit my favorite cartoon ever. And Wait, I is that really so it? I'm so happy that it was given such a proper and satisfying Wait, what's ending. What's the rest of the video? Wait. When we last left what? Steven in the game, <laughs> they had just made peace with yellow, blue, and white diamond after going through the whole complicated rigmarole of Steven also being Rose Quartz, who was also Pink Diamond. They all came back to Earth to heal the corrupted gems, including Jasper, that one's important, and they all lived happily ever after. Why does Steven, the Pink Diamond, the Rose Diamond, or whichever one it is, have to be so much smaller than the other diamonds. Why can't Steven be a six foot giga chad like the white diamond? Why is Steven cursed to being a small little child? And I said, oh, he's a child. That's probably why. That. At the end of my last recap, I didn't know that was gonna be the theme of the movie. <laughs> These days, the gems are living out there happily ever after by building a little place in the middle of Beach City for the now healed corrupted gems to live out their lives and learn about all the crap they missed. It's called Little Home. Katsu Network canceled Steven Universe after a gay wedding episode. What? Why would they cancel it after a gay wedding episode? What? Why would they do that? Homeworld. And everyone is doing great. Though the diamonds keep badgering Steven, the closest thing to Pink Diamond they have left, to move in with them on Big Homeworld. Obviously, Steven does not want to do that, but I'm sure that'll sort itself out eventually. But for now, we get to see our favorite main character gems finally able to relax after all these years. No more villains, no more wars, everyone can just chill. Cool. Oh, okay. Not cool. Giant uh -oh. drill full of pink goo just landed on the earth. It's fine. Some weird new gem standing on top of it. Nah, that's party, all right. It's Spinel. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Calm down. Spinel is a very angry gem who we know nothing about. Steven's like, hi, I'm Steven. What's your name? Whoa, whoa. Her giant drill digs into the ground and she immediately starts swinging at Steven and the gems with this crazy scythe thing called a rejuvenator. And Pearl's all like, oh, that sounds good. Rejuvenation is usually like a good thing, right? So it probably like heals them. It might even make them stronger. Maybe she is a mute person that just really, really wants to help everyone out. I cannot believe it is you, Spinel, who for the audience's information was the gems are all poofed by Spinel's re No! We didn't get any exposition? You can't just kill the exposition character before the exposition happens. How do I know what's going on? Juvenator. Steven gets hit with it too, but it just kind of gives him the jibblies for a bit, so he yoinks the scythe away from Spinel and poofs her with it. A reminder, poofing is not killing. Poofing is simply oh. dissipating their physical form for a little while. Shattering okay. is killing, but you know, cool. that's not important right now. Eventually, all the gems start reforming, but they're acting odd. It's like they all reset to their factory defaults or something. Oh, amnesia. That's why they call it a rejuvenator. All right, that checks out. And before Steven can even hope to make sense of what's going on, Spinel comes back. But she's not the same angry, vengeful, spiky haired gem we knew before. Now she's all happy, bubbly, and calls Steven her best friend. First she tries what? to kill him, now she's his best friend. I'd make a joke. 
Oh, wow, she looks totally different too. Dude, she must have went through some trauma to get to the point where we, she was so mad. That, but that's kind of just how Steven makes friends. And to make matters worse, the Rejuvenator might not have poofed Steven, but now his powers aren't working. Man, how could this possibly get any worse? Oh crap, the drill. This giant syringe is injecting some kind of pink toxin into the world that's killing everything. No, it's just impregnating the earth because life is a glorious gift. And being able to witness such a thing is something Something that we should all feel thankful for. Soon there will be new Earth babies after the pregnant Earth has a C-section. So we're gonna have to deal with that at some point. But first, we gotta get the crystal gems back to normal. Several musical numbers later, Amethyst is back to normal, Ruby and Sapphire formed Garnet, but she doesn't really have her memories back, and Steven got Pearl back to normal by fusing with his dad, because that's apparently just something he can do now. But that what? also triggered something in Spinel that made her run away. Steven finds her at a warp pad, and they travel to this abandoned space garden. Apparently, this is where Spinel used to live as a playmate for Pink diamond way back in the day. But oh. once Pink was given her first colony, the Earth, she legit just abandoned Spinel. That's messed up. You can't forget about your OGs like that, your day ones. No, come on now. She got famous. She got a colony. Did a little bit of colonization. Forgot about our friends. Messed up. Stand perfectly still and wait for her as part of a game and then just dipped. Oh, that's so messed up. That's horrific. That's like leaving a cat on the side of a motorway. Just putting out the car and just leaving it and driving away. I hate pink diamonds now. That's, that's so, I hate that. That makes me so mad. My theory that Pink has been the real villain of this entire series. Holy crap, what a terrible person. Spinel waited in that garden for 6,000 years. Oh no, it's like the dog from that episode of Futurama, Seymour. Never moving an inch. But after all the diamond drama went down and peace was restored, Steven sent out a message to the universe and Spinel learned the truth. Pink left her, started a new life, made new friends, and then disappeared forever. All right, to be fair, if she didn't get that after the first 2,000 years, I mean, that's kind of on her a little bit, not to do victim blaming, but like it's been, it's been 2,000 years, so maybe you should clock on at some point. That's why Spinel randomly attacked the Earth. Revenge. Doesn't really explain where she got the injector though, but... Uh, Steven does what he does best and promises to help her if she helps him save the Earth. But Spinel starts questioning if he really wants to be her friend or if he's just lying to her like Pink so she'll turn off the injector. And when Steven accidentally drops the rejuvenator, Spinel's just like, oh no, nah, -uh. you ain't pulling a fast one on me. I don't know why Spinel sounds like John Mulaney, but all right. She turns on Steven and drills the injector back into the earth. Oh, uh, Come on. her memories back, by the way. At least to a oh. cool musical number, but ultimately in the plot, it just kind of happens. And now cool. we have the final face off between Steven and Spinel. Steven randomly gets his powers back through an anime style epiphany, like, oh, I just need to believe in my ability to change. And he launches into an epic musical number. But Spinel, isn't having any of that and says, Just can it, won't ya? You can't just make everything better by singing some stupid song! Which, yo, bass! <laughs> Finally! God, someone says it! We don't need no anime moments. Also, speaking of anime moments, she winded up a gear three punch like Gum Gum King of the Pirates Luffy. It has weird implications. So apparently in universe, Steven is literally singing a completely original song that he's just pulled out of his butt while being mercilessly beaten up by Spinel. That just seems like a weird use of time right now. But I guess it does something because eventually Spinel comes to a realization that Steven really was trying to help her. And she breaks down wondering why she's even fighting. She starts crying and then I start start crying and then everyone's crying and <laughs> But right as they stop fighting, the injector just goes <laughs> Steven manages to save himself and Spinel from, you know, exploding and dying, but Oh, is the earth dead now? Is that the end of the earth? The town's still in pretty bad shape. Oh, it's just a town, it's fine, there's more. Spinel's like, well, I've made a mess. I should probably be on my way out. She feels like she's already screwed up too much to be friends with Steven and True. wishes she could have a blank slate with someone else. Here come the diamonds! Yeah! Blue, yellow, and white all come down to Earth at the worst possible time to be closer to Steven. But once they meet Spinel and hear about her story, they're like, Yeah, dude, Earth sucks, but low-key, this pink gem's pretty dope. Is it chill if we, like, 
take her? Spinel's like, that'd be chill. They all leave for Homeworld and Steven starts licking the dirt. Steven what? Universe future. Why? And Why this is that? where things start getting pretty crazy. By the way, if you're enjoying this- Okay, well, it seems like Spinel went through a bit of a bad situation. And yeah, I would say after blowing up a town, then you probably can't stay in the town anymore. Just seems to make sense. The locals won't be very happy with the fact that you've destroyed their livelihoods at home. So far, you can always head down below this video and click the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell. But foot, I already clicked the subscribe button. I guess you'll have to do it for me on his channel. Go and do it. Next to it to make sure you don't miss any future recaps like this. I'd really appreciate the support. So what's going on now? Sometime after the events of the movie, the world is back to normal and the gems have created little homeschool to better teach the healed gems about their new life on earth. Why homeschool? Make a public school so they can make friends. Steven's kind of like the principal of the school, but he's clearly struggling. He's loaded down with responsibilities. He's dealing with gems who still hate him, and a bunch of his friends are starting to change or leave Beach City. And all also, isn't he like, what, 15 years old, 16 years old? He doesn't look that this old. This change and stress is causing some weird things to happen to Steven. Remember at the end of my last recap? He's gonna have a mental Diamond break. Ripped Steven's gem out of him, and it created this pink glowy Steven that was insanely strong and super scary. Well now, anytime Steven gets too worked up, too scared, too stressed, he starts glowing pink and gets all sorts of new powers. This yeah, me too. Is Steven's diamond half starting to shine through. He discovers this for the first time during a fight with Jasper in episode one, and is like, wow. Uh Has this Jasper fella not learned his lesson by now? Okay. That's weird. Jasper, you know anything about this? But Jasper's just like, get off my property. So over the next like five, six, seven episodes, this kind of crap just keeps happening and no one really does anything about it. But after one partic- Oh, Jasper's a girl? Sorry. I have a cat called Jasper and he's a he. So I just, you know, I thought, I thought, that this character was my cat. Killer incident that nearly kills Steven and his friends at a little homeschool graduation, Steven decides the stress is becoming too much for him, and he quits his job at little homeschool. But honestly, I think this just made everything worse. See, Steven has spent pretty much his whole life doing two things, helping others and avoiding death. People really like trying to kill this boy, but now no one's really trying to kill him anymore and- Has anyone truly studied the long-term impacts of potentially dying and being in life-threatening situations every day and fighting otherworldly beings that can crush you in an instant while also having incredible powers, space-age technology. Do we really know the long-term mental effects of all of these? All the people he was trying to help are better now. So Steven's kind of left feeling like he has no purpose. And when you're feeling lost, you can make very, very stupid decisions. And this is where Connie comes back into the picture. These days, it's kind of implied that Steve- Whoa, hey, okay, listen, they're holding hands. You said the stupid, listen, having a relationship isn't always a bad decision. Steven and Connie are maybe dating now, but they don't get to see each other a ton because Connie is super busy studying to lo-fi chill hip hop beats. Nice. Uh, she's getting ready to enroll in an out of state college and Steven's getting worried that the two of them will start to drift apart. Oh, uh, that reminds me. I Fair I forgot enough. to mention in my last recap that Steven and Connie confused together to form Stevani. Stevani. Stevani? I'm sorry, just the way they were positioned there, I was like, what is going on? Stevani is definitely one of the most interesting characters in this show, but they don't show up super often, so unfortunately, they got a little lost in the shuffle last time. But as Steven's going through it, he realizes that when he's part of Stevani, he doesn't feel lost, which makes him even more worried about Connie moving away. And oh no, wait, that is a crazy amount of over on someone else. Not only do you have to be with them, you have to be physically fused with their form in a way that makes them not completely in control of their own actions just to feel okay. I think that we should get some better coping mechanisms than consuming someone else's body. And here's where the stupid comes in. Steven decides that at the age of 16 and right before Connie's about to start college to propose to her in the hopes of nice. getting married and going to college with her. This goes about as well as you'd expect. Steven is, weird. of course, rejected in honestly a really polite and loving way. Connie doesn't say, no way, freak, and then spit in his face or anything. She Be gives funny, him a though. hug and says, it's not a no. No, it's a not now. And Steven takes it pretty well, until he doesn't. And this is where things get pretty serious. Steven starts glowing again, but now he's also starting to swell up uncontrollably. He goes to the Jesus. hospital and discovers that- <laughs> He goes to the hospital? Guys, I'm not 
100% sure if this is accurate in this world, but I don't think that the normal human hospital has a cure for being a gem creature from an alternate dimension who is actually your own mother, and then you start swelling up and glowing rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they know how to fix that one, to be fair. <laughs> While he's healed physically from all of his dangerous adventures over the years, he never really healed mentally. Steven's been dealing with near-death yeah, no experiences wonder. since he was a little kid, always in danger, someone always trying to kill him. And that childhood trauma is affecting the way his body handles stress. Every problem in Steven's life feels like the end of the world because... That's all he's known. In the show's own words, his body is responding to minor threats as if his life were in danger. And with all this oh, change that in actually life makes sense. and his fears of being left behind looming over him constantly, his body's response to that stress is becoming more and more extreme. Unfortunately, things for Steven don't get much better after the hospital visit. He's have we tried therapy yet? Have we been to a therapist? We, we done that? No? Not still yet. swelling, he still can't control his diamond powers, and he doesn't know what to do or how to keep his friends out of danger. So he runs away and finds Jasper to ask for help. Jasper convinces Steven that instead of trying to repress his anger and his powers, he should just let them out. So the two begin training, and as Steven learns more and more about his powers, he becomes not himself. Eventually, new buff Steven decides he's ready for a rematch against Jasper. He but turns into the fight, Hulk. He loses control again. He traps Jasper and attacks her with a giant wall of spikes and dead? Steven shattered her. Oh Jasper's my god. Dead. Dead? Uh, luckily, he's able to heal Jasper's jam. Ah, oh, no, come on. Can you imagine if they just, if he just killed her and then she was just dead and you have to just live with that? Oh, okay, Com maybe the compounding trauma of everything previous to that and then murdering someone that you totally didn't mean to who didn't deserve it. That might send you over the edge. But man, it would be a hard-hitting story moment, wouldn't yeah, it? Bring her back, but holy crap, I never would have dreamed this show would go there. Kid show, this right, kid show, yeah. This is the cheeseburger yeah. backpack show. The show that started with a rap about cat-shaped ice cream sandwiches. And the main character just killed someone! The newly healed Jasper bows to Steven and calls him her diamond, which really freaks Steven out, as if he weren't already freaking out enough. You know, from the manslaughter. Steven runs away to Homeworld to talk to the diamonds, but that doesn't really help. Though, for some levity, we do get to see Spinel again, which is nice. She seems to be doing well. She's animated like Sonic now for some reason, which I guess is a sign of growth. I'm glad she's doing better. Can we just focus on her for a bit? Cause Steven- She turned from Luffy into Sonic. I'm to fantasize about shattering White Diamond that I'm very scared. Steven's friends give him an intervention where he breaks down and admits to all the dark thoughts he's had and to shattering Jasper. He calls himself a fraud and a monster and suddenly his body just erupts, growing into an oh. actual giant monster. Oh so my God. Oh, it's a physical manifestation for how he sees himself. And the only way that he can get better of is if he accepts that he may be flawed, but he is still a, a good person deep down and that he'll always have his friends to help him whenever he might trip up, right? The kaiju thing is really cool though. That's a thing we have to deal with now, but the gems don't really know what to do. He's too powerful to attack, Fair enough. too strong to restrain for long, and he won't listen to anyone. Lapis holds him Very back for a while, but- day. Giraffes can eat apples and do kung fu. Giraffes can eat apples and do kung fu? Claire, I mean, thank you for the two dollars. I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Breaks free just in time for, of course, the cluster to come back because the what? cluster will always come back. And Why is it still here? Diamonds to show up at the worst possible time because the nice. diamonds will always show up at the worst possible time. They start crying and blaming themselves as the cluster holds back Steven, but Connie's just like, yes, this is your fault, but now's not the time for fix parties, it, you narcissists. Connie fix it, fix it, fix it. Is that for his entire life, Steven's been helping everyone with their problems and making them better people. But Steven never had that for himself. So in the most Steven Universe move ever, instead of fighting the gems, the diamonds, Greg, Connie, Lion, the cluster, they all tackle hug Steven. Even after he confessed to all the awful stuff Aww. he's bought up, his friends and family are still there to show him love and support through everything he's going through. Steven Aww. Finally stops, breaks into tears, and shrinks back down to his normal self. Oh, that's Ooh. cute. That's okay. Really cute. Oh my god. Oh man, I haven't even seen the show, and just from this recap, I got a little emotional from that. That's really cute. I like that. Can he still turn into the Godzilla form, though? That's what I really need to know. Kitty cat, he's a pet for your tummy. Cookie cat. Woo. Okay. 
Happy times, good time show, happy time, fun time, Steven! Woo-hoo-hoo! Woo! Let's Several go! months later, Steven is doing a lot better. He's keeping up with his friends, he's finally seeing a therapist, Steven X Therapy confirmed, and he's decided it's time for him to move out. He goes around town, says his goodbyes, drives away, and with that, Steven Universe is officially over. And... Wow, what a freaking journey this show has been. Yeah, that's a crazy show. I mean, I understand why people like this so much. I understand why people get attached to these shows like Steven Universe and Gravity Falls and Adventure Time. I might be past the point where I really want to get into watching cartoons, even though I still watch anime, which is just the Japanese version of cartoons, so... Who am I to say, right? I can understand why this was uh, such a phenomenal... Uh, pheno phenomenon. It's a bit weird that it got cancelled after a gay marriage episode, like... who? Who cares about that? It's very strange. But I can see why people liked it a lot. Definitely emotional. I can imagine if I watched the entire show, I'd probably probably shed a couple tears towards the end. So I, I understand. Hopefully, uh, no one's too mad at me for the fact that I'm not gonna actually watch it. I'm just watching recaps instead because there is a lot of shows out there. Like I'm watching Demon Slayer now. I just saw I'm watching that. It's great. But anyway, if there's something that you do want me to react to, let me know on my Discord server. Make sure to subscribe to Foot of the Ferret because they're fantastic and they deserve it.